Miracy. There once was a woman who had so many problems, so many worries, so many troubles, that at times she felt she had more troubles than anyone else in the world. Well, there was one friend she knew who had quite a large share of troubles herself, but this friend seemed to be able to move through her troubles and come out the other side with her head still held high. The more the woman thought about her friend, the more she began to think, I could ask her to tell me how she deals with her problems, and then I would know how to deal with mine. Hi, I'm Lisa Bloom, the Story Coach, and you're listening to Once Upon a Business. In each episode, we explore a story, a fairy tale, folk tale, or traditional story, so that we can discover the amazing lessons relevant for business and for entrepreneurs. The woman with many problems became convinced that talking to her joyful friend was the answer. So one day she knocked on her friend's door. The friend invited her in and they sat down and chatted together while they shared tea. By and by the visitor told the friend why she had come to visit. Oh, but I can't tell you how to deal with your own problems, the friend told her. Only you know what are the right choices for yourself. The visitor looked so crestfallen that the friend added, but I could tell you some advice that someone once gave me that helped. Oh, would you, could you, the visitor encouraged her. All right, the friend answered. Why don't you let that part of yourself, she gestured to herself, that is connected to all that is, she gestured above and beyond herself, take over caring for your troubles. Well, all right. It wasn't the kind of advice that she had expected. The visitor stayed a bit longer, chatting and catching up. Then she said goodbye to her friend and began walking home. On the way home, she thought, I really have tried everything I can think of. What do I have to lose? So that night, when everyone else was asleep, she shut her door, got into bed, sat there and said, That part of me, gesturing to herself, that is connected to all that is, gesturing above and beyond herself. Please help me with my troubles. I don't know what else to do. Then she figured she must be done, so she turned out her light, pulled up the covers, and fell asleep. And that night, she dreamed a dream. She found herself in a vast candlelit cavern, surrounded by grey bundles of all shapes and sizes, as far as she could see. Walking toward her, was a woman with long, flowing white hair and dressed in a long, dark cape. Who are you? asked the dreamer. And what is this place? This is the cave of the Bundles of Troubles, and I am the keeper of the cave. Bundles of Troubles? Yes, the keeper explained. Each person who walks the earth carries a bundle of troubles on their left shoulder. The dreamer turned to look, and there was a grey bundle on her left shoulder. It had been there all this time and she'd never noticed. If you wish, the keeper continued, you can take your bundle down and exchange it for another. Really? I can? The woman lowered the bundle from her left shoulder. Oh, it felt so good to put it down. Then she began picking up different bundles, feeling their weight, trying them on for size. She did this for hours until finally she said, can I take this one? This one feels just right. Certainly you may, the keeper told her, but first, why don't you open it up and look inside? So the woman put the bag down and pulled on the grey drawstrings and looked inside. But these are the same troubles I brought in here. The keeper of the cave smiled softly and nodded. That's usually what happens. But don't despair, for there's another bundle on your right shoulder that should help lighten your load. The woman turned and saw another bundle on her right shoulder, It had been there all this time and she'd never noticed. Only this bundle was woven of silver and gold threads and it sparkled like a diamond in the sunlight. The keeper spoke, why don't you take down that bundle and look inside? So the woman did. 
The bundle was light as down. She pulled the silver and gold strings and looked inside, and there she saw all of her experiences and all that she had learned. There were her talents, her gifts, her hopes, and opportunities yet to come. The woman felt her heart fill with joy, and she looked up to thank the keeper of the cave. But the keeper of the cave was gone. All the grey bundles were gone. The cave was gone. And she found herself sitting up in her own bed with the morning sun streaming through the window, shining in her face. There's so much about this story that I love, and I've told it again and again throughout the many years since I read it, this German folktale which was adapted by Alison Cox. There are so many moments in the story that speak to the experience of the business owner as well, experiences that I've had for sure. Perhaps you have too. Often I find that people struggle to ask for help. It can be really vulnerable, first to admit that you need help and then to actually reach out to someone and ask them. I love that the woman in the story finds a role model, someone who has troubles similar to her own and yet seems to manage them so much better than she does. In business, it's also possible to identify someone to reach out to, someone who seems to have gone through the challenges you face and is doing well, and yet often we feel reluctant to reach out. I had a time many years ago when my business was declining. I was doing the same things, but they weren't getting the same results. It was a time where my partner had lost his job and there wasn't anything on the horizon. And I felt like I was waiting for him to figure out his next path. And in the meantime, my business was not doing well. And it came to that moment where I realized I couldn't depend on him finding a particular path. And I certainly couldn't depend on doing the same things that just weren't working anymore. And that was the moment that I realized I needed to ask for help. So I identified someone, a colleague, who was doing pretty well in a similar field. I asked if we could meet. I remember we met in a coffee shop and I said to her, listen, I'm struggling and I need some help. And immediately she showed incredible generosity. She asked if she could introduce me to a few people and I remember we took on a project that we were going to collaborate together. And it was a real pivotal moment in my business because from that collaboration that wasn't even paid, but from that I managed to get some great contacts and some great new clients. And it was the thing that just really refocused my business for me and helped me move forward. And when I think back to that moment, it was the ability to actually ask for help and to admit I'm struggling. I have a problem here. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to take this bundle of troubles and turn it into something better, or at least that was my thinking at that time. I think the friend is an interesting role in the story because she's willing to firstly listen to the woman, to her visitor. And then she says that she can't tell her what to do, but perhaps she could share an idea of something that helped her. And to me, that sounds very much like coaching, where the coach will rarely tell you, yes, this is what you must do, but instead help you explore through their experience or through their tools or their wisdom or their ideas of how you might be able to find the solution from within yourself. I love in this story that, in essence, we have everything we need. We have the solutions to our own problems. But sometimes we need to go inwards. We need to trust ourselves and to have a guide who can say, here's what I've done, but I certainly can't tell you the answer is a really smart way to be able to find the answer from within you. But there's another moment in the story that I love when the woman finds herself in the cave. The keeper of the cave is another helper, the wise woman, the, the crone, which is a familiar archetype in traditional tales. Again, someone to reach out to, somebody who has wisdom and you can get help from. And that magic moment of seeing the bundles all over and this illusion that you can find something lighter, that you can exchange your troubles for others. There's another version of the story that I often tell where she opens the first bundle that she wants to take to exchange her own 
and she finds a terrible illness and knows she doesn't want that. And then she opens a second bundle, and in that bundle there's the death of a child, and she knows she doesn't want that. And then ultimately continues on until she finds the perfect bundle. And of course, that's her own troubles. You could almost end the story here, this lesson that our challenges are uniquely ours, and it's on us to find the solution. But then in the story, we discover the bundle on the shoulder, the core of our strength, the experience we've had and will have in the future that give us the ability to cope with any trouble we may find. I love this, the idea that we can handle anything that we're faced with. There's an old saying that you're only given the problems that you can solve. You're only given the difficulties that you can manage. And this story is like the proof of that. It's an inspiring thought to bring to our business journey that whatever we're faced with, it's exactly what we can handle. It's uplifting. It's so hopeful. So the centerpiece of this story is this idea that she has some guidance and then she falls asleep. And the dream is what provides the solution so that when she wakes up, she's happy, she's confident, and she knows she can move forward. And I've actually found this to be true in my own life, where I've gone to sleep with a problem, not necessarily been aware of a dream, but woken up with the solution. I remember working with a senior leader, and we were working on a huge and very influential speaking engagement that he was preparing for. And we had decided that he needed the perfect story to launch this speech that he was giving. And he wanted me to find him the right story. And I had spent this particular evening, I had spent hours searching and searching for the right story. And I couldn't find it. Every story just didn't quite feel like the one that he could tell. And I was due to meet with him the very next morning. I stayed up late that night looking through all of my archives of stories, all the stories I've told in the past, looking through the many books I have of traditional tales. And ultimately, I just went to bed. I couldn't find the story. And I had decided that I would tell him that I needed more time to try and find a story for him. Anyway, I went to bed and I lay in bed thinking about the fact that I couldn't find this story. And I just decided, okay, I'm going to let it go for now. The following morning, I woke up and the story was right there. I woke up, literally as I opened my eyes, I saw the story. And I met with him a couple of hours later. I said to him, I think I might have found the right story. And I told it to him and he said, it's perfect. <laughs> so I do believe that our dream work, what happens, what we process in our dreams, is so much a part of how we show up in the world. And the more intentional we get about that, the more we can actually use our dreams to help us find solutions. It's a really special space for us to be able to explore as business owners, not just in the creative space of finding stories or telling stories, but in our own businesses, there's a moment of awareness of creativity within the dream that can help us in very, very practical ways. If I were to sum up this story from a business perspective, it's really about two things. It's about asking for help, and it's about really allowing yourself to explore your own internal resources and to trust that, to know that no problem is too big, that no challenge is too difficult, and that with the help and the advice and the guidance of mentors or friends or coaches, you can find the strength and the solution to be able to resolve whatever you need to and to move forward with that idea, with that dream that you have to do great things in the world. I'm Lisa Bloom, and you've been listening to Once Upon a Business. You can find out more about me at story-coach.com. That's story-coach.com. Once Upon a Business is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes Making It, Just Between Coaches, and Course Lab, this episode of Once Upon a Business was produced by Cynthia Lamb. Jeff Govertson assembled the piece. Danny Inney is our executive producer. So you don't miss the episodes that are coming up on Once Upon a Business. Please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. 
And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It really does help us out. Thank you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>